Several years ago, my wife and I dared to take on this 1960s fixer-upper that needed a lot of work. So over the last several years, we've spent a ton of time transforming every room in this house from outdated to gorgeous. But there's still one room in this house that's yet to receive Andrea's magic touch, our home office. This room has basically functioned as a storage room for us and it's in pretty embarrassing shape. So Andrea's made it her mission to turn this final room in our old fixer-upper into something absolutely gorgeous. But as usual, this project will not be complete without plenty of adversity. I'm about to quit. So join us for the ride as we take this ugly room and turn it into our dream office space. We want to take a quick pause to say thanks to Aura Frames for sponsoring today's video. Aura is the Wi-Fi connected digital picture frame that beautifully showcases your pictures and videos. You can add unlimited photos straight from your smartphone using their app. Their frames are designed to be super easy to use because they want anybody to be able to use them, including your dad who might still have an old flip phone. Aura Frames was named the best digital photo frame by Wirecutter, the strategist, and was selected as one of Oprah's favorite things. I personally like the Aura Frame because I have this fancy camera on my phone along with thousands of pictures that I pretty much never get to see after I take them, but now I can quickly put them on our frame and we can to enjoy them anytime we want. Plus their frames have really impressive high resolution displays so the pictures look like real prints. Aura frames really are a great gift for any occasion, but with Christmas coming up, they're especially great for those family members who might be a little bit more difficult to shop for. Plus right now, you can get $30 off their Carver mat frames with code DIYY. All right, now let's get back to this office makeover. If you caught part one of this series, then you know that last week we started by cleaning out the office, which took quite a while. Then in phase two, we began demo, where we took out all of the existing shelving, and after demo was complete, we made a run to get all of the supplies we would need to completely rebuild this office. The only challenge was that we had to fit all of those materials into the back of our minivan, which we did successfully. Oh, we're in, let's go. From there, Andrea spent nearly an entire week week building brand new bookshelves that would go all the way to the ceiling. And the following week, things got even more exciting as Andrea cut and installed custom butcher block desktops, finished up all the custom trim work, and then spent two solid days prepping this room for paint and then added the first beautiful pops of color to this space. But in today's video, we are finally finishing this space. Andrea will be staining the butcher block desktops, installing elegant custom hardware, building and staining a custom picture frame, and of course styling the room before we get ready for the big reveal. And we were so excited about this makeover that I actually hired a camera operator who's worked on multiple Magnolia Network shows to help me film the reveal shots for this room. So join us for the final leg of the journey as we take this old outdated room and turn it into our dream home office. Now that it was time to finally start putting this room back together, the first thing that I brought in was the new rug. Let's see how I like this rug in here. I've gone back and forth on this rug a lot and I've even thought I might try and sell it and order another one if I don't like it. So this kind of feels like moment of truth for this rug. Oh, well that was anti-climatic. It looks really good in here. The rug looks so good. I wanted like a small kind of plaid geometric type print to it. And I love this one, I just got it and the color felt a little bit cooler than it did in online, but I feel like it looks awesome. Next, it was time to start oh. testing out furniture in the space. Decided to, change, to try out the chairs first instead of the couch. These just look like office chairs. I keep going back and forth on what furniture is a right fit for this space, but these chairs are a great start. All right, I have all my materials set out to try and install these drawer slides. It is a little bit confusing because there are no instructions. I mean, there is a sheet of paper. I would not call this instructions. I'm not actually sure what it is. And there are three different kinds of screws, but none of them are labeled, but it also doesn't look like there's gonna be enough. <laughs> actually, I just decided I have a lot more experience with cabinet doors and there's fewer doors. So I think I'm gonna start with the doors first. That way I know for sure which screws I have left over for the for the drawer slides. So let's move over there. We'll just pause that thought, we'll come back. Whoa, 
<laughs> what does woe mean? That's a, that's a tight fit. They almost didn't fit. They look so good though. Once I finished installing the first set of doors, I moved on to the second pair of doors and it was pretty exciting to see these doors finally getting installed. All right, the doors are installed. That was actually pretty easy. So I'm gonna move on to the drawers and hope that these go as smoothly as the doors just did. Woo, that went a lot more smoothly than I thought it would. So I'm actually gonna go ahead and install the bottom drawers next. And the reason why is after doing this one, I'm realizing it's going to be easier if I can reach down, like if I need to grab any of the drawer slides from the back. I did this one and then realized, oh, it makes more sense to start at the bottom. So just a little explanation. That's why I'm now switching in a somewhat illogical order here. I install drawer slides pretty infrequently, and so every time it feels like a bit of a learning curve, especially since these are a different kind than I normally use. But thankfully, they ended up being extremely straightforward to install. Installing these drawers was pretty much a rinse and repeat kind of process, but it was just so satisfying every time I got to close another one of these soft closed drawers. Look at that. Things were coming along nicely until Andrea decided to injure herself. Are you okay? Yeah. You need like a Barbie band-aid or anything? It hurts. Oh, it actually hurts. <laughs> Andrea was just trying to cover all of her bases and make sure that she had put blood, sweat, and tears into this project. All right, that went a lot smoother than expected, so I have time to get the hardware on today. So that's what we're gonna do next. It's always just a little bit nerve wracking making a hole in your brand new drawer fronts, but I'm always sure to measure several times so that I'm confident I'm not about to mess them up. All right, so to attach these, I went ahead and drilled the hole where my hardware is gonna go, but instead of attaching the hardware right now, I'm actually gonna screw them from the front. I'm not completely sure this is gonna work on these top three. Normally, this is like the easiest way, but this might be too short, so if my screw hits right here, then I'll have to do something different, but we're gonna try it out. I'm ready to start attaching the hardware. These are some antique brass knobs that I picked up on Amazon. I'll link them in the description if you want the same ones, but I'm just doing a simple single brass knob on all of the drawers and then obviously for the doors as well. All right, so I started kind of testing out the best way to attach these knobs and unfortunately on these bigger drawers, what I realized is because this is inset and this part is so thin, I can't put screws coming from the inside because there's no way to get the screws to attach to this part and so I don't want to do that. So what I'm going to do is just pull this off and then I'll just use where the screw hit the drawer box to continue my pilot hole and then I'll use the hardware to hold it on there. These are thick enough that I can put a couple of screws from the inside but they're also so thick that my screws are barely too short so I'm going to need to put a bigger drill bit and then kind of countersink it on the back so that it makes it stick out a little bit longer on the front. So I'm going to go ahead and add screws from the inside of my top drawers here then take these screws out and then drill a bigger hole in the back to countersink it, and then I'll finally attach the hardware. And with every little step, this room continued to get that much closer to the finish line. What you think, darling? good. Wasn't quite as fast and easy as I thought. After I finished installing all of the hardware in the drawer fronts, I moved on to adding hardware to the cabinet doors and thankfully this was just as fast and easy as I thought it would be. Yeah. 
So before we go any further, we wanted to pause and tell you really quick the main reason why we decided to make over this office. I am actually preparing to mentor 25 students who want to start a quality YouTube channel in 2024. Some of you probably already know this, but Dean runs all of the YouTube side of our channel and he is really good at it. But I definitely wasn't always good at YouTube and I actually started my first channel back in 2017. I didn't know anything about YouTube and it didn't take off like at all. Yeah, you went from having videos that got maybe a thousand views to videos that were getting hundreds of thousands of views. Yeah, it was pretty wild and I actually started compiling the things I was learning into a system that I used for making consistently successful YouTube videos. And I was able to use that system to grow my first channel from about 6,000 subscribers to 100,000 subscribers. And then you had the crazy idea of filming some of my DIY projects. Well, to be more specific, I actually had the idea of taking my system and everything I'd learned and applying it from day one of DIY Wife. And of course, the results were insane. And over the last three years, DIY Wife has continued to grow and I've continued to grow in my knowledge and study of just how YouTube really works. And now I am super excited to actually open up an online YouTube mentorship program where I'm gonna take 25 of you on a nine month journey to building your first successful YouTube channel. And within this mentorship program, I'm gonna lay out my whole system for how I approach YouTube, there's gonna be action steps for you to take, so I'm telling you this is exactly what you need to do and when you need to do it. Plus, we'll have live group coaching calls each week where we'll actually see each other face to face and you'll get to ask your hard questions and meet up with a group of people who are going on the same journey that you are. He's been preparing for this for so long and I'm excited for him to get to pour into more people because he really does love doing it. I do love this stuff and I love to pour this into other people. And so if you're someone who's been excited about starting a YouTube channel and you think you might want to be a part of this YouTube mentorship program, then check out the link in the description below. And you can sign up for my newsletter where I'm going to be sharing more about my journey on YouTube, as well as letting you know all of the details about the upcoming mentorship program. All right, next we're going to work on our butcher block desktop. And I went ahead and tried out some stain samples last night just to give them time to dry and give me some time to think about. But this first stain is Rubio Monaco in chocolate. And it's just a little bit too dark and not quite what I was going for in this space. But I layered it with another color over at the other end of the board that I'll show you when we get down there. This next one is General Finishes Gel Stain in the color Antique Walnut. It's the same one that we used at Grant and Allie's house for the table that we built and also the butcher block in their laundry room. But in this room, it just looks totally different and it's a little bit too orange for this space. So I'm glad I tested it out because that's the one I thought I was going to be going with. This one is Minwax Stain in the color Mocha and I just don't like this one at all. It's like too splotchy. The color is not right. I think it has a little bit too much gray in it and I don't like it. There's nothing I like about it. This last one I think is our winner and I actually layered two different colors. It's the same combination I used on our coffee table if you were here when we built that. It is layering Rubio Monocoat's Vintage Brown Easy Pre-Color and then I used the Rubio Monocoat Chocolate on top of that. So that's what we're going to be going with for this entire space and I think I still have enough left over from our coffee table. All right, so now I'm ready to go outside and start staining this butcher block. What a day, oh. huh? It's so nice. Bask in it, babe. Bask in it. It is so nice. Okay, so the first thing I need to do before sanding these down is actually to drill a couple of holes that I want to have available for power cords. One will go right behind where our computer is, and then one I want to go by the bookshelves where our printer goes. That way, we don't have to have a cord coming up over the front of our desktop. It can just go kind of tucked back behind. So I've already measured where I want those to go, and now I just need to mark them on my boards. And we'll go ahead and drill those with my little mini hole saw. Is this one called a hole saw? I don't remember. It's a little saw that makes a hole. Next, I'm gonna go ahead and sand these, make sure I get my top really nice and smooth and some of the rough edges. I've got 180 grit sandpaper in here. I like somewhere around that grit for when I'm staining wood. And with a lot to get done today, Andrea was truly in busy bee mode. So before 
I actually start staining, I'm gonna use some of the wood cleaner. This just helps get every last little bit of sawdust on before I put the stain down. All right, now that I've got it all sanded and clean, I'm ready for my first coat, and this is what I mentioned earlier, the pre-color easy and the color vintage brown. This is what I'll apply first, I'll let it dry, and then we'll go over with the Rubio Monaco product that more people are familiar with. it well that's it for that we gotta let that dry for a little while at least the sun is out that'll help it dry fast word all right i'm ready for my top coat this is the rubia monaco oil plus 2c in the color chocolate again it's the same one i used on our coffee table and i still have my little applicator handle and the applicator pad. I like the red one because the pre-color was a water-based product and so it kind of raised the grain a little bit. So even though I sanded it, it's like, you can feel that it's a little rough now, but this will help knock any of that down instead of like sanding it again. This stuff is so easy to apply, I love it. Oh, I might have done like way too much, I forgot. Yeah, you know why this is called chocolate? It looks just like chocolate. All right, now I just need to wipe all the excess off with a rag. The stain was looking pretty, but Andrea's arms were burning. Work it, work it. Looks like a great workout, you know? My arms are burning. And even though she'd made a lot of progress, she still had a long way to go, and so it was back to busy bee mode. like chocolate <laughs> it's very dark i feel like this looks a little darker than my sample did it looks really pretty yeah it does this stuff stains so nicely it's... how are your arms doing over there oh my gosh <laughs> <laughs> i'm sorry i broke a sweat once I finished staining the top, I went ahead and got the inside of the holes I drilled for cables, and then we flipped over the piece to stain the bottom. Andrea was back to the races until she made a messy mistake. I splashed it all over my pants. Rat roll. Dang. Oh, it's on my shirt too. Look at my hands. So, you know, gloves are recommended for this sort of thing. Yeah. I like forgot that it was so messy because I was like, oh, I'll have the applicator thing, but I forgot about wiping it off. <laughs> I even have gloves out. That's what's kind of sad. It's not like I just don't have gloves. You just didn't Whatever. use them. All right, so one last step before we take these inside is I want to add a couple of pocket holes onto the bottom side of my longboard because it's going to tee into the desktop on the other side and I just want a way to attach those two pieces together, keep that joint really tight. Oh, I'm like out of rest still. <laughs> so I'm gonna like cl clamp this on here. <laughs> Once the desktops were finished, we were finally ready to bring them inside and see them in the space. First, we brought in the smaller pieces to slide under the shelves, and this proved to be a little bit more tricky than I was hoping it would be. What is happening? <laughs> Unfortunately, this desktop on the left was just a little bit too tight, so I needed to get out my multi-tool and trim a little bit off the bottom of the bookshelf. The desktop on the right side was still pretty tight, but fortunately it went in just fine with a little help from the hammer. That one went in. Of course, this can't be simple, but this is way darker than my little sample piece was. 
who knows it could just be because i wiped i didn't put as much product i wiped it off faster it wasn't in the sun who knows it could have been that little spot of wood it just looked different um so i'm gonna try revving some oil on this in hopes of taking a little bit of that top the oil plus 2c coat off that's the darker one we'll see if if not it's okay it, it looks good still it's just a little darker than i wanted so i think this will work this is just some hemp oil that's for furniture that i have on the end so, so hopefully i don't start crying in about 30 minutes and being the stain artist that she is andrea made sure to get this color exactly right that or she just decided she hadn't had enough arm workouts for the day I feel like it's just a little bit hard to capture these subtle changes on camera, but my plan definitely worked and the color is now looking perfect. Oh, it looks good. That's like, that's definitely lighter. I gotta bring a lamp in to see how it looks like with some light. All right, so really quick, I'm gonna go ahead and nail this little piece of shoe molding that I had painted before just to cover a little bit of an unthin gap there. <laughs> All right, I have one last project, something to build for this space, which is a custom frame for this artwork that I ordered a really long time ago. I think I've had this for over a year now. It's gonna go on the wall over there, above the couch or the chairs. But since this butcher block just took so much longer than I thought it would, I don't have time to start this and finish it. Plus I still need to go buy like the frame pieces. I'm gonna save this for tomorrow. I'm gonna work on putting stuff on the shelves because that's more fun anyway. I need something fun after a picture vlog. That was hard. To me, the most enjoyable part of any project is when I finally finish all of the hard work and I get to decorate the space. I still need to go get actual artwork for my frames, but for now, I'm just trying to get everything in place and play around with a few different ideas to see what I like best. And then this day got even better because my good friend Justine came by to see the progress and she brought coffee. It looks so good. It feels like it just matches the rest of your house. It is always so helpful to have a second set of eyes to help when you're finalizing the design on a project. And Justine has helped me with so many projects in the past and I am so grateful for her opinion when I get stuck on a project or just need a second set of eyes. Justine was here not just to help me with the office, but also to get some input on a huge project that they have in the works. And even more exciting, it's a project that you'll be able to follow along with really soon. They're gonna have a YouTube channel. Oh my gosh, we can say that now. Whoa. We'll share it as soon as it goes live. We'll let everybody know. It's gonna be awesome. Justine and her husband have an absolutely massive project going on at their house, and I'm coming alongside them to help produce and tell the story of this absolutely epic renovation. So stay tuned, and we'll keep you posted when they launch the first video in their new series. After we went back and forth for a little bit talking about the office design and renovations at their house, I went back to styling the shelves in the office. <laughs> And after styling the shelves, it was time to bring in a cool new piece of furniture. All right, new desk chair. Guess where I found the desk chair? Where? Did I tell you? No. Nope. Where? At Home Depot, of all places. What? Not in store, online. They carry, they'll have like random furniture that they carry, but I wanted one that was like a really neutral color, not quite white, and I wanted a brass base and I wanted affordable. I really didn't want to buy a super expensive desk chair. And this one ticked all the boxes. I'm moving into the office. Really? It's very like calming. I like this color. This is a good office color. All right, I'm finally ready to build my frame for this artwork that I've had for so long. But I'm just gonna build a wood frame really quick out of whatever scrap wood I have. I don't care a whole lot, you know, what dimensions it is, but I'm gonna make it smaller than this so that I can wrap my canvas around and staple, and then I'll build the part of the frame that you actually see around that. I'm gonna measure my artwork, and then we'll go start building the frame that we're gonna wrap this onto.
All right, so these are the top and bottom pieces of my frame. When I'm saying frame, it's the part that I'm gonna wrap it around. I use just random scrap wood, so they're not even the same size, which is totally fine, but I need to know how wide this is together because I need to cut my side pieces, which are gonna go right here, and I want my overall height to be 37 and a half. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and add pocket holes to the ends of both of my side pieces because that's how I'll assemble this together. All right, I finished with my pocket holes. I'm gonna go ahead and screw this together and then we'll take it inside to staple the artwork to it. Once I finished assembling the frame, I was ready to grab my stapler and head inside. Once I brought the frame inside, I laid it on the back of my artwork and added the first few staples. Once I had the first several staples in place, I just worked my way around the border, making sure I pulled it tight before I stapled the rest in place. And with that, we are ready to make a trip to Lowe's with our little helper. We've got our assistant with us for this Lowe's run. So why aren't we driving the minivan today? <laughs> Minivan's at the doctor. She was having some gas. <laughs> she wasn't feeling very good. But. but don't worry guys, she's in good hands. She's already feeling better. We're gonna go pick her up. And it was just a mere thousand ah! dollars. But hey, you know what? Old cars, no car payment. She's paid off. <laughs> she's 2011. <laughs> so give us a shout out if you're still driving your old car because it's got no car payment. You gotta do a little maintenance on it every now and then. But you know what? We'll take that and we'll take it. The first stop in Los was to get our little building assistant his own project to work on for the day. I want the race car. After that, it was time to pick out the trim pieces to finish off the picture frame. Hey babe, what if you did something crazy like something wild, you know what I'm saying? And with projects for both big and small, we were ready to head home. I mean, to Target. To pick up some decor items and a Lunchable. Dude, this guy's getting a building kit and a Lunchable? He's having a day. This guy is having a day, folks. Look at him. And from there, we were ready to reunite ourselves with our beloved magical minivan. Coming to get old Vanny boy. Look at that beautiful, beautiful man. I mean, van. Oh, it's so good to be home, buddy! Buddy, I just love you so much. I mean, no car payment each month. Sure, we gotta do a little maintenance on you, bud, and that's understandable, but you know what? You're better to me than a truck, okay? I just wanna tell you that. You are better to me than a truck with a really large payment, okay? Welcome home, buddy. Welcome home. Once we got home, we were ready to finish up this picture frame. All right, we've got the wood for the frame that's gonna go around the outside. So next I just need to measure again, make sure I've got my exact measurements, then we'll go cut that down. Once I had all of my measurements, I went outside and made miter cuts to all of the trim boards I bought for the picture frame. Being smarter today. I know. Look I at you. I still have a little brown under my fingernails from. <laughs> for the frame, I used the same chocolate colored stain that I used for the butcher block. Since the pieces are so small, I cut a tiny bit of an applicator pad and used that to apply the stain. Once I applied the stain, I wiped off all of the excess with a rag and the color was looking really good. From there, I repeated the same process for the rest of the boards. After everything was stained, I brought it all inside and started attaching it to my canvas with my brad nailer. Finally, it was time to hang this picture up on the wall.
from there, I got hired to be a human <laughs> nail. Uh, move it to the right, like an inch. Hold it over your head. Babe, <laughs> is that it? Yes. Can I put this down now? Yeah, you can. I ordered these candle sconces a while ago because I knew that I needed just a little bit more something to help fill this wall. And I love the way they not only help to fill the space, but they also add a nice unique touch. How are you feeling about it? <laughs> I like it. I love it. Although I did just order a different couch. Babe, <laughs> so what happened here? I just, this is like part of design is mood boards are really helpful but then I could tell once I painted and we had the chairs and the couch in here too I was starting to picture the stained desktop and I was like I don't think I'm gonna like the leather it just something about it just doesn't feel right I went with like an off-white linen sofa and then I'll bring in some just different textures and some of the colors from over here with the pillows I feel like with the richness of the butcher block that's just what it needed that's what it feels like what I wanted. So now we gotta wait. Now we have to wait for the couch to get here. I'm waiting for pillows. But in this video, they'll be here in like 10 seconds. So lucky you, you don't have to wait. Actually, in this video, they'll be here in three, <laughs> two, one. It's here. Woo! That was fast, real fast. That was so fast, it was like that. Wait a minute, you're wearing different clothes. Oh, trick of the eye. <laughs> Just kidding, it did show up in a box. We had to carry it inside, move the other couch out of the way, but it does look really good. I like it. Are you pleased with your decision? Yes. I was a little nervous because the reviews were not very great, but I think because my expectations were lower, I'm pleasantly surprised. It's actually comfy. I love the way it looks. The fabric is really pretty. I think it's a perfect office sofa. But based on the reviews, I probably wouldn't put this as like your main living room sofa that your family uses every day because it seems like maybe it doesn't hold up to that kind of use. And also very exciting, my pillows came in the mail. These are from one of my favorite pillow shops, Hockner Home. I'll, I'll just link them. It's spelled different than it sounds. I love their pillows and their synthetic down alternative uh, pillow inserts are the best. Like I love them so much. So that's what I always get. <laughs> All right, we just have a couple last little things to do. And so next, I'm actually gonna hang our shades for the window because those finally came in too. So I decided to go with a bamboo shade because I just wanted something with more warmth on the window, but I did get one that's lighter. It's close to the color of our floors because I didn't want it dark, like the same color as the desktop, and I like the way it just kind of broke it all up. So I ordered these online. I can't remember where from, but I'll link them in the description. <laughs> you can customize them to whatever width and length you want. So that's what I did, and I got them a few weeks later. What do you think? <laughs> it looks so fancy. Oh my gosh. Whoa. That made that wall look totally different. And after weeks of hard work, it was finally time to reveal this office. And I actually had an ace up my sleeve because I hired my friend Justin to help me come film the final shots of this room. Justin has been a cameraman for several well-known TV shows, and it was really fun to learn more about his process while adding a few more tools to my own filming tool belt. So without further ado, here's the final reveal of Andrea's dream office makeover. Well, how amazing does this office look? And it's insane how much work it took to get this room to the finish line. 
But in the end, I feel like this thing could go in a magazine. It looks spectacular. Yeah, I love how the office ended up turning out. I mean, it's a lot like what was in my head, but I love it in person, which is really good. And it just feels like so cozy, so inviting. I wanna go sit in there even when we're not doing work. It is a great place to like go hide and have my morning coffee and nobody knows I'm in there because they're used to that being like a storage room that we don't use. <laughs> so it is, oh, it's just such a great space. I love it all. So thanks for coming along for the ride in this dream office makeover. We've had a blast. We hope you've enjoyed it as well. And we'll catch you in the next big DIY project. Mom's doing her thing. <laughs> Asher's doing his thing. Oh, buddy. <laughs> okay. This is getting weird, man. This is getting weird. <laughs> it's just some kind of schmancy, isn't it? Don't put your... <laughs> you saved it. I was like, don't you put those shoes? Those shoes are dirty. Oh yeah, this is nice. It's yeah, like, it's this is a perfect nice. little office couch. If I was in a meeting with you, I'd probably sit like this. <laughs> oh, my arms! Over here. My arms are sore. Well, how amazing does this office... Would you get yourself together over there? I was just waiting for you to notice that I was <sighs> making a face. Well, how amazing does this office look, babe? I mean, you did so much. I can't believe the transformation. I can never believe it. <laughs> are you... Making fun of me? No. What else am I supposed to say? You finished the room, it looks amazing. There's not there's not and really it, a whole lot of options. And it took a ton of work to do it. So what else do you want me that's to say? That's it. That's it. Cut. <laughs> See you next week. I really wanted to interrupt you just to let everybody know that a pet peeve of yours is being interrupted, but I might be pushing it too far. <laughs> Stop it, man. A I don't have peeve. a pet peeve of being interrupted. Oh, I well, guess in real life I do. Yeah, yeah, which is fair. When like, which kids is fair. constantly break in on your conversation and you're like, Well, you I don't just... like it when I interrupt either. <laughs> like, <laughs> like I, that. I just want to finish your conversation like an adult. <laughs> That's kind of how my family like communicates is we just kind of like jump in at the end. And so I I've had it... to work on it. I've had to work on it. It's a fair, that's a fair request is to not be interrupted all the time. Yeah, I'll call Are it. Are you trying to talk? <laughs> Come on, man! Ready? Mm -hmm. Well, how amazing does this office look? And it's insane the amount of work it took to get to the finish line. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah! I'm sorry. I was just so tickled by it. You can be a real turd sometimes. I'm so sorry. I was trying so hard to hold it in. Yeah! DIY life!